This is the Gamers Lounge Podcast for the week of March 3rd of 2014. Now, Sega challenges you to experience Sega Scope 3D. 3D so real it puts the action right in your face. Not even 3D effects like these can match what you'll see through these amazing Sega Scope 3D glasses. Games and accessories sold separately. And nothing but the experience itself can give you the challenge and excitement of Sega games like Saxon 3D. Coming soon. And Missile Defense 3D. Sega Scope 3D. Only on the Sega system. Sega. The challenge will always be there. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Gamers Lounge Podcast. My name is John Meadows. Uh, with me as always, Eric and Nathaniel. How's it going this evening, guys? It's going good. Not too bad. Cool. Getting some ice over your way, uh, Nathaniel? Oh yeah, definitely got some ice. Yeah, we do too. Uh, school's on two-hour delay. I was, was going to say, do you actually have to go in? I thought maybe they'd call oh, you yeah, out. So. Have to go in. No, uh, no, no. Too bad. Well, be careful out there. It's, it's it may not be, be the too apocalypse bad. almost, which is why it was weird that we actually got called out last storm we got. Well, it kind of was the apocalypse around here the last storm. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't take much for everyone to think it's the apocalypse. <laughs> it's the apocalypse. Yeah, not 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 down this way anyway. So that's for it's sure. It's a snowflake, Ermager. <laughs> <laughs> They don't do that out and out out your way when it snows, do they, Eric? Everybody go crazy, or they just go? No, nah. that's like the Seattle area. It's like, yeah. oh, half an inch. Oh no, we have to close schools. And also, no one knows how to drive. <laughs> well, I'm glad to know it's not just a southern thing. That's the- <laughs> now over here, it snows to plow the roads, and people still go to work. Yeah. But again, you know, it's like the high desert climate, pretty much. I mean, yeah. that's the best way to describe it. So it's dry, doesn't snow that much. That's good. That's good. Uh, dry, but it still gets cold, but no snow. I could deal with that. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, lots of allergies here. People, nah. that's, that's the, probably the worst thing people complain about, allergies. Well, see, yeah. what's what's bad around here is yesterday it was 70 degrees. Now it's 24 degrees. So <laughs> we go from one extreme to the other around here in a heartbeat. So At least this year, bad. good gravy. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I, I had to get up and take my wife to work this morning because I was getting the oil changed on my truck. And when we left the house, it was 56 degrees. That was 7 o'clock. By 9 o'clock, it was 37. <laughs> it's just like, holy fright. So I don't understand weather, but I guess I don't have to. But. So I, mean, I think a lot of weathermen don't understand weather either. I think that's true. Thank you right there. <laughs> so last week I wasn't here. I appreciate you guys going ahead and uh, doing the show. I did get to listen to it uh, at the end of the week. It was a good show and a good interview. I wish I could have been here yeah. for it, but uh, it's pretty pretty good. Yeah, Daniel he uh, he took the lead. He handled most everything. He did a good job. Yeah, I really chimed know. in a few times. Yeah, it was uh, good to have the uh, talk about high jump and stuff like that. Yeah, so, that game looks awesome. I can't wait mm, to. It's fun. Wait till it comes out. It's going to be really cool to play. Um, speaking of playing games, uh, what have you guys been playing? What have you been doing this week? Who wants to go first? I will. Eric? Okay. Go ahead. What have you right. been playing? So I've been playing a lot compared to last week, even though I had to deal with this. <laughs> yeah, content. really? Holy fright. I played, I played some GTA Five multiplayer on Sunday. It was a good time. So I just yeah. saw my friends from Cheap Ass Gamer. You know, killed some noobs, did some races. The best races are the GTA races, which let you use weapons. So you can have, like, really fast you know sports cars with weapons and you're trying to blast each other off the road yeah. that's fun that's cool did some stuff like that screwed around i uh, tried the strider demo i was thinking about getting that game because i like the old strider game on genesis yeah I did too. demo and i'm like screw this i'm gonna get i will get punished well you know what i was terrible at it too but i went ahead and bought it because i like the genesis version so much it's not that bad once you get into yeah. it it reminds me of like a russian attack 
that mm-hmm. uh, new game, that one, Russian Tech Expatriate, or maybe like uh, like Shank. Yeah, Shank it's kind of like yeah. Shank, yeah. But it's it's really good. I mean, it's I've gotten to a point in it, though. Played, I, I'm going to guess it's going to be the discount on PS Plus one of these days. Oh, I'm sure. I was kind of surprised it wasn't when it first came out. You know how they usually do that. 40 bucks of PSN credit that's just burning a hole. Mm. I, um, I downloaded Brothers A Tale of Two Sons for, from PlayStation Plus a couple months ago. Yeah, I, I did too. I started playing that. The control scheme bugs me a little bit because, you know, two different characters. But it's fun. It's a cute little game, I guess, or charming. Did you finish it? Mm, I got about halfway through. It's only about three hours long, right? It's li- it took me to ride at two hours. It's literally the length of a movie. When hmm. I played it. I just played it straight through. You know what? I love the control scheme because uh, it plays into kind of the narrative bit. Yeah, it's fun. I like the and I played some more XCOM. I'm almost done. I'm on the very last mission. Cool. And I don't know. It's really hard for me to recommend Enemy Within, just because. I mean, it's just pretty much one big DLC pack. And if you've played through the story, there's some stuff they add, but not enough to say, hey. So, right. It's fun, but eh, I think it'll be one of those games I get rid of, probably. Yeah, uh, I never, I, you know, I guess if you never played the first XCOM game, or the you know, the main game, you could yeah, get, be get enemy with it. Yeah, because at least you could play with the jeans and the MEC troopers. Yeah, but you don't have that in the 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 vanilla version. But you don't need that to beat the game, right? So mm. it, it just adds some cool stuff. Yeah, and I've been. No, I feel like way overpowered this time. Even on normal, I'm just tearing things up eh, maybe it's because you played it before you kind of know sometimes when you go back and play games again like that you know Just drilling people with the snipers yeah. and okay it's like a brothers game i you know i downloaded it when it was on ps plus and i'm <laughs> i meant to play it but it ended up getting pushed down and pushed down on my list so i never even paid any attention to it i need to play yeah, that one especially since that. it's I'm probably gonna play we were gonna go out of town this weekend but i think we're gonna stay here because of the dog and if we do i think i'm gonna um, play through the Bioshock Infinite DLC. Yeah, I know. Uh, so I need to do that too. I think I'm going to wait. I need to. I haven't played it yet. But I think I'm going to wait because in the new DLC coming out. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, I may just wait and play it then. That way, I'm playing <laughs> both back to back. Um, so it'll seem like one game. What have you been playing, John? Um, I finally finished Shinmu. I hadn't played it in a couple of weeks, and I was right at the end. I only had like two hours left of it. So, Did you get lots of people watching your live stream? Um, yeah, there was um, there was quite a few that come and go as it went. I got a lot of subscribers that way um, because you know I was playing. Sometimes I'd play at odd times, like at Saturday night. I maybe would not play till midnight, um, depending on what we were doing. Uh, but like last night, I started to stream uh, Shenmue Two, and That's like a great game. I started at like nine o'clock, so I had a lot of people watching then. But uh, I only got a channel. Now, are you using playing. your VGA out mod to do this? How mm-hmm. does that work? Or, okay. Well, the way I have it hooked up is I've got the VGA uh, cable from the Dreamcast running into a um, a component cable a vga to component cable box and then it runs into my um i use the adapter that came with the uh uh the elgato the component cable adapter Mm -hmm. so it actually looks really good it works out real well because it has a nice clean picture i could have used that adapter that goes from the av cable to the hdmi but it it doesn't look right it still looks like crap so i need um, to see about getting my dreamcast modded yeah i've I've gotten contact with the one dude uh, that when I wrote the article back on yeah, Good, did you ever go Nation. With that well, no, he was he was not taking any more at the time because he was in the middle of a IT project. So he was he moves from place to place. So like he was in one place for two months and then he was in another place in another city on the other side of the country for two months. So the last time I talked to him was January and he was getting settled down in a new place and he was going to be there for a couple of years and he was going to start doing it again. Um, so I need to get in contact with him and see how things are going with that. Um, cause he said, as soon as he got settled in, he would uh, let me know. So he was looking for an apartment at the time or a place to stay. He was staying with a friend, so he didn't want to do it mm-hmm. then. But yeah, I need to, I need to track him down see what's going on. Um, played a little bit of the, uh, Elder Scrolls online beta. They had it open again this weekend. Um, and it's still, it's Elder Scrolls Online. If I keep playing enough of the beta, I just won't buy the game when it comes out. Uh, yeah, they have the NDA up on that now, so I saw a couple of videos pop up on yeah. YouTube. Yeah, mm-hmm. 
I uh, I was going to record some of it, but I just didn't. I didn't play it enough this time around to actually mess with recording. I think I just played it a little bit Saturday morning, and that was it. Um, I mean, it's Elder Scrolls, but it's online, so that's all I can say about it. Not that's not that's not bad, but it's like if you like Elder Scrolls and you have some other friends who like Elder Scrolls that you want to play together, yep. probably a good idea. Yep, I mean it it's is. Not, well, then it's just not for you. Yeah. Or if you just really, really like MMOs and want to try and do them, I'm sure that would probably be oh, yeah. something that a lot of people try. Be a lot of hey, them it's that. Elder Scrolls. It's a pretty big franchise. So. Yeah. That it is. And then I played, um, I picked up Strider um, on PS4, played it a little bit. Um, and I also picked up uh, Thief last week. I've played on, the. F- oh, on PS4. Right? Yeah, on PS4. Um, I played the first. I think I'm on Chapter 3, something like that. Is it- does it play like the old Thief game? Yeah, you know, it's been so long since I played the Did old play, like, Thief games. I would yeah. say no, it's way too long of a gap that it would not play like the Yeah, old it's it's more like Dishonored, you know, it's first person. It's very I gotta, I gotta get that game again. It's Dishonored. very, very, very stealthy. I mean, that's what they want you to do, stealth. It's very unforgiving well, it if you don't be, do stealth. I'd be angry. It's and it's very slow paced. It's a very slow paced game, which I'm not complaining. Sometimes slow paced is good, um, but what's cool is there's just there's just a ton of different angles you can go at things. At you can go in and be real stealthy, try not to knock out or hurt anybody, or you can go in and then at the end of the level it gives you a, a percentage of. It gives you a breakdown on the on a little graph. It shows you well, you did this and this and this and this. This qualified you. This one as a as a predator instead of a stealth player. You know because you knocked yeah. out twenty one people or something like that. So what you're saying is I could just go through and kill everyone if I wanted to. You could. I mean, if you wanted to, um, it's almost better if you don't. It's more fun if you don't because eh. <clears throat> the thing is, is it's just not made don't to be play that this way. Eric, yeah. It's not for you. I mean, it's, whatever. <laughs> I like. I think it. that that's one thing I don't like that they actually made it possible to fight people because in the other older games, you're pretty much dead. Yeah. Like you could try and fight, but you pretty much had to run away and hide. Well, the thing is, because is if you tried to fight, you were dead, and I like that because you're a thief. You're not some master. Right. Yeah, I want to point out, dishonored. I wonder, I was pretty stealthy most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> you're well, not some like master, you know, warrior or anything. You're a thief, you're, so you're supposed to be sneaking around. I will say, I if you do get attacked on this one, you can only last about two or three hits, and you're dead. Yeah, I mean, you can't go well, real fast. Easy. Yeah. I mean, I mean I'm sure if you're like used to the old ones, if you crank up the difficulty or something, they'll make it a little bit more like those. Oh yeah, PC, I saw it for PC on Cheap Ass Gamer for like less than thirty bucks already. There were a couple sites running deals, so I was like, mm. oh, maybe I would. Yeah, be tempted. Maybe something I'll pick up down the road. Yeah, I mean, it's. I love the original games, so I can I really want to play this one. Yeah, I did too. I really, I remember liking them. I can't. Re- it's been so long since I played them. I can't remember a ton about them, but I remember liking them. Um. And I There's read. several specific levels that are still kind of stuck in my head of these like things that happened in there because I played them so much. There's there's a couple of things on the PlayStation 4 that drive me crazy with it, and I was telling Nathaniel this before the show, is the stupid light bar on that control on the controller. It if you're hiding, it's like dark blue. And it's very hard to see if you're completely hidden where nobody could see you. If you step out in a light, the controller will then turn to a bright white and just light up the entire room. And I hate that because it's just it's <laughs> distracting. Because like I was telling Nathaniel, it the glare from the Dual Shock actually hits my um, bezel around my TV. And then it shines back at me. I can't stand mm-hmm. that. But you can't turn it off. There's no way to turn it off. <laughs> it's one of those things that seems kind of like a neat thing on paper. It's like, ooh, we'll turn the light jam into a physical thing yeah. on the controller because it has the light. But in practice, it's kind of like, ah, this is just annoying. Well, it was like... Because who's going to look down at the controller? Well, it's just, it's distracting because the first couple times it does it, it makes you, it, you want, you look yeah. down at it. You're like, what the heck was that? Oh, that's the stupid controller. Well, that's probably what they did. It was when they tested it. If they, I don't know if they can adjust brightness at all but they're like well if you're gonna actually notice it we have to make it really bright so yeah it doesn't, i guess it becomes distracting you know it's so you know what you need to do to fix it sharpie yeah really a It'll black piece of everything. electric tape <laughs> um there you go and then it blends in with the controls like there's no light at all yeah well you know they they used it on tomb raider 
Um, you know, when you'd light a torch, it would shine red and kind of uh, dim in and out like a flame. So it kind of, mm-hmm. there's, and that's kind of stuff I'm fine because I don't pay any attention to it. But man, when I walk out in the light and that light gets super bright, it's like, <laughs> what the crap? <laughs> Power of the sun. Yeah, it's like so stupid. If it if it's waking my animals up in the house because Wait, it's have so you bright. Battlefield Four and PS Four. A little bit of it. Because um, I think it would be funny if they wouldn't do that in the game. But, you know, Battlefield 3 and 4, 4 are not quite as much, but 3 had the reputation of the sun being so bright uh, because they put a big bunch of flare on it. Right. So it would be funny if they did that with the light in there. Every time you look at the sun, <laughs> you know, I don't think the light does anything on that game. If it does, I don't pay any attention to Probably it. Probably not, because why would you? Who cares? Yeah. It's, it just seems so dumb, but it's just distracting, and I hate it. I wonder, but. it's one of those early things that I think that is going to quickly be dropped that no one's mm-hmm. going to even use, like a lot of the features from last console generation. It's like, yeah, the first few launch games have some little crazy gimmicks, and oh, wait, motion controls in this controller? <laughs> yeah. We're not going to do that anymore. No, it's, it seems silly. If you think of some of the early PS3 things that had the... Things where you're tilting the controller and doing mm-hmm. all that, that yeah, like in layer, right? Yeah, and it was just didn't work very well, or just wasn't enjoyable, even if it kind of worked, so that nobody really bothered to use it later on. No, kind of got itself muted out. If they would just give you the option on the system to turn it off, that would be great. Yeah, you know, and then yeah. I can just turn it on because I tell you the other thing it does it sucks the battery life like nobody's business. I mean, playing um, Thief the other night, uh, each level takes about well it took me about uh, forty five minutes to get through, um, and just with that light doing that thing, I lost a quarter battery power in an hour. And I know it had to be the light. That's the only thing that was changing. You can't turn it off. No, you can't turn it off. There's no way to turn it off. Well, yeah, because with the light, it's a very constant thing draining mm-hmm. it. Whereas with you know button presses, it's intermittent whenever you're using it. Yeah, but that's my only complaint with it. Just aggravates me. But so, what have what have you been uh, playing, Nathaniel? Uh, same stuff. I've been playing some Battlefield Four. Although I played it with friends for the first time in a while, because I've been playing it solo mm. the last couple of weeks when I picked it up here and there. So I've been doing, like I said, last show, some Second Assault, and then played some vanilla Battlefield 4. Uh, one of my friends just picked it up. Well, actually, he'd had it, I think. He just hadn't installed it for some weird reason. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm going to play with him and some of the other ones. <laughs> they uh, started up platoons, finally, on Battle Logs. So yeah. got a bunch of us up. signed up into a platoon. and It only tracks stats if there's like four or more people in a match, though. Hmm. I don't know, it's kind of weird. It is weird. That doesn't make sense. They're trying to do like, hey, here's last time, but we're going to add some stuff so it feels less like, hey, it's just some list. This time it has features so you can gain experience, but you don't really get anything, so I don't right. know. Whatever. I think I, would, I think I might consider it, even though I have it on PS4, I would. I might consider getting it on PC with my brother and get premium and just pay the extra money, I guess. Yeah. yeah I mean, get it where you're going to play it. and. You know, if you have people to play with, that's the best place to have. Yeah, I mean, do I really want to run it on a mid-range gaming PC that's like two years old, or do I don't want to play it on PS4? Well, it could oh, give you an extra. Could, could you play the beta on PC at all on that nope. one? Nope. Okay. Because it still might run. You're not going to make it look as super pretty, it's gonna, but it'll, it's still going to look decent if it runs. So that's the only thing. Yeah. As long as you meet, your, meet the stat requirements, you probably be fine yeah i mean it ran well on mine and mine's going on i think the other day when i was i take it apart took it apart and cleaned it i think i realized it was like going on five years old four or five years old and it still ran really good but i had it way maxed out at the time so yeah anyway i had a really awesome few games too like we had one there was about i think six of us in on the same match and we were behind and came back from like a 300 ticket deficit oh my to gosh. Win at the end it was one of those ones that you're like, yeah, this is why I play this game. Yeah, yeah really. Come from behind to win. So it was pretty fun. And then it, we got all split up between teams because some PC servers have scramble on. So just like if there's a huge ticket difference at the end or sometimes it just does it, mm-hmm. it'll mix up the teams at random, just scramble it up. But those are still kind of fun if you have like, you know, a few people on each team and you're all in the same kind of voice chat can be kind of amusing when somebody you know pulls off a shot and kills you You're like oh i didn't even know you're there you know, <laughs> sorts of hijinks 
That's cool. And then I've been playing Attack of the B Team. Yeah, I saw like your that. your video the other day. I actually watched I put it. one video out. I've got a second one that I've got footage for. I just don't have it quite up on YouTube yet because I've been having issues with rendering it out. Uh-huh. Yeah, it keeps crashing on me. It's annoying. I think I've figured it out now. So hopefully I'll have that up soon. But yeah, I've been playing on that on a server one of my friends has rented and mm. probably do, 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 five, I think yeah, I five, six time, people have been on it so far. I must spend a lot of time wasting time doing nothing because I don't have nearly as much time as you guys do to play games. <laughs> I don't have as much time to play games. I just, you know. I don't, I don't, s- I don't sleep on the weekends. I don't do much sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> sleeping. Well, I don't know. Attack of the B Team is pretty fun. I've been watching videos of it too so I know kind of some of the stuff that you can do in it even if I haven't done it yet myself. Yeah. Crazy stuff. You can like get dragon mounts to fly around. You can I just started exploring a few of the machines you can build and things. So, yeah, it looked really cool. Um, Sweet. What all you I had just there. checked. Uh, I just checked the Battlefield Four system requirements. I'm middle of the road. <laughs> Moment recommended. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. So medium settings. Woo-hoo. That's right. Well, that's not bad. But so yeah, that's pretty much what I've been playing. Yeah. Oh, I um, I picked up um. On PSN, they had Red Dead Redemption and L.A. Noir. They had the Rockstar sale last week. I did pick up those two games, even though I played them on Xbox 360. It was like one of them was like seven dollars. I think they were both seven dollars. Actually, they were pretty cheap. I wish Red Dead would be on PC, just because I want to see a, mm-hmm. a high-res version of that. I would like to see that too. Really, I would sit and stare at sunsets again. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, good times. Well, let's go ahead and get into the news. We got some stuff to talk about. Stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff out. So. We'll, try to go, we'll try to keep it moving. Yeah, we'll keep it moving. Some of it's quick. So, um, it. yeah, there you go. They uh, <laughs> they announced uh, on the 25th. Twitch announced that it would be heading uh, to Xbox One uh, alongside Titanfall. Big surprise. Um, should be available March 11th, uh, the exact same day that Titanfall comes out. Um, what was really kind of surprising about it was, is there's a lot more features in it than is in the PlayStation 4 version. Um, the press release I read, and it was done by, believe it or not, it was done by the Associated Press. I read it on like the New York Times website or something like that, um, that there's, uh, going to be the ability to have your party watch you can invite friends to watch it through the xbox through the party chat system um and all chat while you're while they're watching um eventually they're going to have the jump in feature like they claim they're going to have on the x on the playstation at some time um the other thing that was pretty cool is uh twitch said they were actually going to be able to save Xbox One live streams. That's the one thing that you can't do with streaming through the Twitch app on the PlayStation 4 is you can't save your uh, broadcast. But you will be able to do that on the uh, Xbox One uh, on the (laughs) Twitch site. Um, There was a couple of other really cool things that was coming. Yeah, something about a a smart glass for the chat. Yeah, they're going to do a smart glass thing with the chat. There was a couple other things, and I couldn't find the article again. Um, that was, let's see, maybe this is it. Yeah, that's the Game Informer thing. But no, I can't find the I can't find the one that I ran the other I read the other day that had a lot of the stuff on it. But it was, it, I guess, what it was was Twitch was pretty much saying that they had wanted to do that with the, everything that they have in the Xbox that they're going to have in the Xbox One. Uh, Twitch app at launch. They wanted to do that with the PlayStation 4 app, but Sony was wanting it integrated in with the system, and they wanted it out at launch, so there was a bunch of stuff they didn't get to do with it, and the way they, the way the article read, it was like, the Twitch hopes they'll be able to do everything with that, but since it was integrated into the system, they may not be able to, but who knows. But, you know, at least it's finally coming on Xbox. A big surprise, it's coming as soon as Titanfall comes out, which will probably be the, the biggest game for Xbox this year, so well, I think that that's kind of was planned from the I think so by too. Microsoft, where it's like, well, we could rush it out for launch, but it won't have quite as much features in it. Right. And we don't have 
I mean, yes, people are interested in launch titles, but there's not really that one big one that tons of people would want to stream. Right. Other than just like here and there, but something like Titan Falls, like a lot of people are going to want to be putting that out. You would assume. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a good so thing. Like, okay, we'll like not have it at launch. We'll have it hopefully by then, and like seems they're going to be able to do that. So well, and, awesome. and I have no, I have no gripes with something waiting a couple of months for it to be if it's going to be better than when it's at launch anyway. So you know, I'm yeah, I'm of the nice. mind that if it's you know if you're going to take a couple more months and make a product better, take a couple more months and make make a product better. I'd rather you not bring out a half a a half assed product, you know, and then update it as time goes on. So. Um, that's just me though. And I'm like that with games. You know, if you're going to bring out a game, don't rush the game, you know, bring it out when oh, yeah. it's ready. I can wait. So, um, the, he hopes he can wait. yeah, really, it depends on what it is, but most things I can wait. <laughs> um, Nintendo is ending online services for the Wii and uh, DS in May. Um, it's ending online services for all the games. Um, it's only going to affect online play, matchmaking, leaderboards, services that do, uh, that do not require an internet connection will not be affected. Um, I'm guessing that means... You mean offline? Or off, did I say offline? <laughs> did I say online? No, no, no. You're just describing it as like anything that requires online is... Well, gone, yeah. But anything that doesn't is online. Right. So like the offline stuff? So I'm <laughs> guessing, you know, they, it doesn't say in the article... And even on Nintendo's page, I'm guessing that Netflix won't work on the Wii anymore. I mean, that's an online feature. Uh oh. I mean, no, that'll still work. Well, it depends because that's you're just connecting directly to Netflix through the Nintendo app, so it might still work because you're not needing anything on Nintendo's network for that. Well, it's not that's like true. Netflix has leaderboards. What's up? I think it's more. This is just Nintendo shutting down their servers for that. So anything like you want to play Smash Brothers or Mario Kart Online, you won't be able to. Yeah, there's a bunch of there's a list of games on the Nintendo website that you can get through through the Game Informer article. It's mostly Pokemon, Dragon Quest, uh, the Professor Layton games, um, which kind of sucks because they had a lot of download free downloadable puzzles and stuff with that mm-hmm. that you won't be able to get anymore. Um, but you know, this always happens at the end of a console generation whatever you want to say um however you want to say it um you know system shut down i mean ps3 the other day uh, sony announced that they were shutting down the online play for gran turismo 5 and all the dlc was coming off the store so you know i mean it happens i mean it's it sucks that it does um but it eventually happens, you know. Even the original Xbox, it did take a long time for that to come down, but they, you know, even that eventually came down. So, um, speaking of digital content, Stream or Steam has their uh, Steam family sharing now available to everyone. Has anybody figured out how to use this yet? Because I cannot. No, Once you figure Not out even all your stuff. Well, yeah, I know. That's, everybody wants my everybody wants my two hundred and seventy some games. <laughs> you just start spamming messages your way, like gimme, gimme, gimme. Well, and I tried the other day when they announced this. I tried to figure out how to do it, and I can't figure it out. Um, it, there's no clear instructions on how to do it, and I even well, like the page has something like you have to enable a couple things, and then you have to go to something else i'm sure yeah whatever. well then you know it's just well, what you probably need to do is look on the steam forums because i'm sure someone at least one thread i'm sure there's probably more than one have, this is how you do it i'm sure you know i went through and and you know my steam guard was already enabled it's always been enabled and yeah. you know then i go into the the enable the share feature in the settings for family you know settings family i did not see the share feature uh, well, there was there. Actually, I take that back. It was there, but it was there was a place for a listing of computers that I'd authorized, but you couldn't add a computer to it. I'm like, okay, that doesn't make sense. So I've got to figure it out because, um, you know, you can share up to 10. You can have it up to 10 computers, five up to five accounts. Um, it's an uh, unannounced invisible feature of sharing that if you have a library over 10, you can't share with anyone. Yeah. <laughs> That probably would be something <laughs> like that. That wouldn't surprise they put, me. They put some cat like, oh, you have tons of games people are going to want to share with you? Screw that crap. Yeah, really. <laughs> uh, the cool thing was is the 
the the thing uh who owns one of the questions on the frequently asked questions was who owns and can access dlc and in-game content associated with the share titles guests will have access to the lenders dlc but only if the guest does not own, also own the base game so like i own bioshock on the pc on steam and eric owns it you've got the season pass on the bioshock right I see. I do not. So I couldn't, you could not share the DLC with me because I have the game. You couldn't share that game with me, even though you have the DLC. Um, so there, I mean, it makes sense from a technical perspective to me, because I think that doing that would be so complicated. Like it's one thing like, okay, you have a game and you have DLC for it. You're just, whoever's sharing it would just get access to what all you have. Boom. Here, here's what you've got. But if you've got two people who own a game and then one person has DLC, the other doesn't, like trying to figure out how to get just the DLC and just share that without them actually owning it. Right. With the way DLC works on Steam and their store and all that stuff in their system, I bet that would be a pain to figure out. So maybe they just decide, eh, screw it. Or maybe they'll add it later. You never know. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to tell. So, But I thought that was kind of interesting. You know, it's like, oh, well, we both have the game, but he yeah. has a DLC and I don't. So, But, no, nah, who cares? I mean, usually DLC is not that big of a deal. But, or conspiracy theorist. Maybe um, that's what a lot of people would use if they were going to let them do it. Well, you know, that's mm-hmm. that's true, too. I mean, that's quite possible. Um, who knows? Because this- I know if like, I had a game that I owned that I was like, no, I wonder if this DLC is any good. Mm-hmm. Oh, look, John has a DLC. I'll try it. Eh, I don't like it. Or, oh, you- wait, I've finished it because it's only two hours worth of content. Right. And I don't need I to buy it. Buy it. Exactly. So that's more probably why they wouldn't let you do that. Yeah. It is cool, though, that you get to keep achievements and stuff that you, you get in the game. They go on your account, even though it's a borrowed game. So that's pretty cool. I wonder cool. how that works. Is that only can you go to the Steam website for the game and look at it? Because it's not technically in your library. I don't know. Or if you know, suddenly you not don't have access to the share for somebody, does that game disappear? Yeah. I'm assuming out of your library because you can't play it. But then if you have achievements, is it still there? And it's just like, oh, you can't play it. I wonder how that works. I don't know. I, I really, I don't, I don't know. I'm just curious to find out. That's what I was hoping I could get it to figure it out before the show. Hurts. He just thought that you. Uh, <laughs> too, much. <laughs> too much information. Is breaking down. Now I forgot. It. It's too much information. Now I forgot who won Bud Bowl Five. Um, no. <laughs> wow, we're in some old school. Yeah, here. old school. Yeah, but um. Bud yeah. Bowl? What is that? What is Bud Bowl? Oh, I remember Bud Is that Bowl. like a dog in a bowl or something? Yeah, his name's Bud. What? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, was, I remember I, when the last one of those commercials uh, aired. Golly, I can't either. It's been a while. Oh, I was a kid. What? 19 Dickety 3. Yeah, 19 Dickety, yeah. Somewhere around this TV that you guys talk about these video games. The, what am I doing? <laughs> oh Lord! Um, but no, I was hoping to have it figured out so I could tell you know how we could talk about it on the show. But I couldn't even figure out how to share anything with Eric. Yeah, it's it's. It, I'm sure once they get it figured out, and every, or once they make it easy to use, and everything gets figured out, yeah, we should be good to go. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out it's this like, week. I've got like 15 games. So you guys are welcome to them. Yeah, I was looking through your games. It's like oh, I got it. Got it. Got it. You probably have it. <laughs> you don't have Fallout. Yeah. Have Fallout, the Fallout I don't have any of the Fallout games. I've got the. I don't have them on Steam. That was the only one that I didn't have. I had everything you could, else. You could totally. Last Light. Come on. Did you, you said you had that or you didn't have it? Metro Last Light. Oh no, I don't have Metro Last Light. No, I forgot. So, I didn't have that one either. I might. I might do it. Okay. So we got. We'll figure it out. Or Oregon Trail. There you go. That's a great. Game yeah, too. that one. I did. I do want to try that one. I, I love the old one. So. <laughs> well, it's you know. It's, Zombie Apocalypse meets Oregon Trail is pretty much how it sums up. That's all right. Ways <laughs> That's okay. That sounds cool. That sounds... And you could kill your own party members. <laughs> which I probably did. <laughs> what? They were weak and sick. They were weak and sick. I, I ain't got time to drag those losers. We gotta, <laughs> we gotta move on. <sighs> Leave them behind. Kill them. Anyway, Metal Gear Five uh, Solid or Metal Gear Solid Five. Ooh, Ground next Zeroes. Gen. <laughs> yeah, the next gen, next gen gets a price drop. So it's gonna be thirty bucks because it's like five hours. Yeah, so we're gonna make it the same as last gen, and it's still too expensive. Mm-hmm. It looks though twenty so, would be the high end. Of I know what you're I think gonna get this, John. Yeah, so I have a question. Mm-hmm. Is this like 
since I've the only Metal Gear game I've ever played is four. Is this continuation like more of the story? Is Snake going to be old? That sort of thing. Yeah, it's going to be another. That's, hello, we're going to take a blast from the past. Now I'm even more confused. That's my. Uh, I really haven't uh, read a whole lot into it, but it seems like that's the way it is. <laughs> Uh, Does it really matter? It's no, Metal Gear. You'll it probably doesn't. be confused. It doesn't matter. I will actually. I played Metal Gear Solid 4 and I was like, I kind of know what's going on based on the other games, but yeah. I really don't know what's going on with this game and what's all this stuff and who are these characters. And then I was kind of interested in playing the other games. I was like, hey, I don't have time for this. Yeah. Well, you know, I was hoping they would drop it down to 20 for the digital download, but, you know, still, I was going to buy, I was going to pay 30 for it anyway, so it was like, pfft. I'm still going to... Part of the problem. I know. I'm not much of the solution, but... Uh, the only reason that they can even think about charging that much is because it's a big franchise and there hasn't been a you know a title, a big title for it in a while. Yeah. I mean, really, since 4, really. Has, was there anything else? Well, they had a couple of PSP titles come out, between, but they weren't yeah, but big. Those are, yeah, those handheld those are like stuff, but nothing on console. I mean, yeah. I don't really See, it's like the other day, I was in GameStop and picking up Thief, and they actually had a used copy of Metal Gear Legacy, which was like all the Metal Gear games on PlayStation 3, and I almost bought it, because I still have my birthday coupon for 20% off. Isn't it like all of them except for one of them? Yeah, that's all of them except for one of the PSP ones. There's both PSP well, okay, ones so are on there. That's but a decent deal. It was like 35 yeah. bucks, and that was before my... Or no, it was forty four bucks is what it was used, I think. Forty four thirty four. I can't remember which. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, they're long games. That's pretty much what I do. I just have a bunch of stuff sitting on the shelf and I look at it and go, That's pretty, I need to play that. He's got a big <laughs> tower and then he goes and swims in it. Uh, Scrooge McDuck style. Yeah, swim a big swoon in my tower yeah, my game instead of gold. Did you ever see that family guy where he tried to swim around in money and like broke his leg? It was hilarious. Um <laughs> He dove in, but it was so hard that he broke his leg instead of swimming in it like water. It was real life, but not really. Um, moving on. Watch Dog release date may be leaked by Sony on PSN. Um, I did not get to check out the listing. It's, it, I don't know if it's still up. Let me click it here and see if it's still on the store. But according to the PSN, it's going to be released on June 30th. Um, which is just a few months away. Seems about right from what rumors are for that game, so I wouldn't be surprised if it ended up being out that day. Yeah, and it's a Monday though, so. Uh, well, but, nah. no, it We're still says to that yeah, day. It still says uh, still says it here. Released June thirtieth. Uh, so I'm still looking forward to the game. I definitely want to try it out. Looks really cool. Um, looks different anyway. Uh, I'm going. I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for the game to come out and all the reviews to be like not as good as we hoped because it looks so I don't know why everyone's gushing over this game because to me it looks like this is just an open world game with a couple tiny little gimmicks yeah that aren't really that cool well to, yeah. you know I didn't it could be all right though we'll see but like the way everyone talks about watch dogs is like oh it's the next company is gonna have so much new stuff and maybe I'm just not up on the game yeah. and know everything about it well you know, when I, to me it just looks like it's an open world game it looks kind of pretty yeah it could 30th. be fun yeah but that's a good yeah. that's a good that's a good launch date though June 30th mm -hmm. because Nothing comes out in the summer except for football. No right, which doesn't come out to the end of August because there's, there's no college there's crap, football. Crap releases between June, July, and the end of August. Yeah. There's two and a half months of garbage. Yeah, I mean, with you know, you don't even get college football this year. You get Madden at the end of August, so you got nothing really coming out those months. That'd be a perfect time for it to come out. I remember, I remember when we used to get games for review, and I would, uh, I would like pull up the calendar for June and July and go, hmm. There's nothing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a horrible movie tie-in uh, game. But, yeah, I mean, you know, I was the same way, Nathaniel, as you felt when I first saw the game and saw the pictures and read about it. I'm like, nah, nah. And it was either, it must have been E3 when Sony, it was either one of the Sony or the Microsoft press conferences. I don't remember which one it was I watched. I watched both of them. But when I actually saw the gameplay and shown them doing stuff and stuff like that, I'm like, you know what, that's kind of cool. Um, I mean, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, and see, I saw the gameplay and thought, eh, still. So, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Yeah. Maybe I'm just too, like, pessimistic on that. That's yeah, true. Universe or something. Yeah, you never know. I mean, I do love an open world game. Yeah. But that too. was just like, it's one of those things where it's like we've had so many open world games based in cities at this point that it's just kind of like, 
it really has to do something to really get my attention to be like, okay, that's different enough. I want to play it. Yeah. And it sure has, does have a few things like that, but most part is like, yeah, I don't know that it's going to make that much of a difference because all the things look so gimmicky to me and they look like something that like you wouldn't use very often. Right. And so how much of an impact is it really going to have on your gameplay? And so they haven't really shown a lot of the game. So maybe, you know, it'll prove me right or maybe it'll prove me wrong when it finally comes down. We're like, oh, look, yeah, we just didn't have it ready to show yet or who knows what. Yeah, so. who knows? We'll see. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm scheduled to pick it up. I don't know if I will or not. I have not decided yet. Yeah. But, I mean, I've, I'm, I, was, I, got it, I got $5 on it anyway. <laughs> Um, I got five dollars on Infamous Infamous Second Son, and I haven't decided if I'm going to pick it up yet or not. So, who knows? Oh, say again, come again. What so, Infamous Second Son? Yeah, I don't know if I'm... that one looks like. If you like Infamous, that you will probably yeah. Like and I, I, I liked Infamous. I did. I liked it a lot. I just, I don't know. I, I, the more I see of it, the more I'm like, eh, it looks cool, but I don't know if I'm going to, if I, if I'll wait or if I'll get it when it comes out. I mean, I might. I don't know. I'm still on the fence yeah, about it. I think it. I might wait till till it comes down. Yeah, I mean that's that's my thinking. I might just just hang on and wait, but who knows? We'll see. Um, speaking of new games coming out, Fez was announced today that will it'll be available on PS3, Vita, and PS4. Um, it will run at 720p, 60 frames a second on PS3, 1080p, 60 frames a second on PS4, and it will fully support cross-play and cross-buy. So that's pretty sweet because if you're a PlayStation Plus member and you buy it the week of launch, which is uh, the 25th of this month, it's nine ninety nine, and you get a copy for the PlayStation 4, 3, and the Vita. So... Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I've never played it. Really good I, like it. Vita, I, think. I think so too. Um, I, I've never played it. I've seen a lot of gameplay <laughs> footage of it, and it looks really interesting. Yeah. But. And also, for of all this fervor that we have on every single game coming out, of any of them that don't need it, all right? Who cares if it's in 1080p? Nah, who cares? That I don't. It's care hand drawn art. I doubt that they upresed it. To, 1080p for real right like, it's probably just like that's what the engine's out like, but the art itself was not made that high right yeah maybe it is who knows but it's just like okay who, it's not the art style does not scream i need 1080p yeah it's very you know solid shapes with some you know detailing and all sprite based it's like yeah it's not gonna look any different at 1080 and 720 that much, no really. i would much take the 60 frames a second I'd like the more yeah. smoothness is what I would like over the, you know, that's what I'm... And even then, it's not going to matter too much no, either because uh, it's, it's, again, it's sprite-based, right. so... <laughs> yeah. Uh, but for 10 bucks, get it on all my systems, oh, yeah, I'll pick it up. That's a great thing. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'll pick that up. It's a great price for getting it on multiple. Even on one, it'd be pretty good. Mm -hmm. if, you're not a, if you're not a PlayStation Plus member, it's it's twelve ninety nine. dollars uh, But PlayStation Plus, nine ninety nine. Shoot. I mean, what's ten bucks to get a game on three systems? It's nothing, and it's you know, and all the reviews I've ever read of it is just one of the greatest games ever. So I mean, but I'm wondering how well it's going to be now. Although with coming out on PlayStation, you get some of that. But originally, when it came out, it was very much community thing right. going on with like, hey, what's going on with this puzzle? I don't know. And people figuring it out as they went a little bit, not the same, but similar to sort of Dark Souls or Demon Souls when they first came out with people not knowing ex all the ins and outs of it yet. Right, yeah. It'd be interesting, but like I say, I'll pick it up, I mean, for $10, shoot. I'm going to end up having to get one of those 64 meg memory cards after all, so... <sighs> If I keep buying Vita <laughs> games like this, I've already got I've got my 32s full, and I've started another 32. So I might as well just get the 64 and be done with it, whenever it comes <laughs> out. But uh, PlayStation Plus uh, this for March actually is bringing uh, Dead Nation, uh, PlayStation 4 Makeover Remake uh, HD, whatever you want to call it. Um, so it's just an upscale port then? Yeah. yeah. Oh, the De and Dead Nation was free. It was one of the free games that they offered for free when... Um, oh, the whole hack thing game. happened, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when yeah. it came back, that was one of the ones I got because I was the ones yeah, that had was like... I already owned a couple of the games that they offered, so it's like, right. oh, okay, Dead Nation, I don't know anything about it, sure or whatnot. I played it for like I don't even remember 10 what minutes. Uh, that, 
What else did they have? Uh, Infamous. Infamous. Infamous was one. Because I took Infamous. Uh, um, Wipeout HD is yeah, one. Yeah, that was one. Um, there was like about a half dozen. I can't remember them all now. Back, way back when they had that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, Dead Nation, uh, which and Tomb Raider uh, for PlayStation Three, which will be out tomorrow. Um, it's also Thomas was alone, Lone Survivor, Director's Cut, Unit Thirteen for the Vita, which is actually a really good game. I bought it on one of the Vita sales at Christmas or something like that for like five we bucks. Should, uh, it's good. We should play some Dead Nation. It could be fun. Yeah, I'm 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 anxious to try it. I never played it because I didn't get it with a free thing, so I've never played it before. So. It's kind of like it's a, a twin stick. This was gonna say it's kind of like a dual stick kind of shooter, zombies. right? So yeah, I could like yeah. that. You control your guy with one stick and then you shoot, kind of aim with the other one. Yeah, and uh, but it's kind of a third, semi third person slash top down perspective, if I remember right. Looks really cool. Um, yeah, so. I think it'd be much better in co-op than it was by myself. Yeah, I'm sure most yeah. games like that are. The the AI isn't that good, so. So that's cool. It's uh, easy to play then. <laughs> I like it when the AI is dumb. That way I don't have to think too hard about doing stuff. So. No, not well, the are bad zombies it. too. So. Yeah, not the zombies. I'm talking about the like. It. Oh, your partners, your partners. Yeah. Oh, I hate that. That uh, drives me crazy. You know, games like that. So, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to play it. Um, I'll download it tomorrow when it comes out. I'll have. I'll be home. So. Download it when the store updates. Um, Atlas confirms that four new Persona games are heading to North America. Holy fright. Um, you know, usually we don't get very many Persona games at all, if any, and now we got four coming this year. So we got Persona Q, Shadows of uh, Labyrinth, uh, that's for the 3DS. Um, it'll be out this fall. Uh, Persona 4 Arena Ultra Mix, which is the fighting game, will be out on uh, 360 and PlayStation 3. Uh, does and I've never played any of them. I don't know what to expect. So in a few weeks, are we going to have some news stories about um, Persona fans dying of overdoses yeah, to Persona games? Probably. <laughs> You're probably right. Um, I played the fighting game. It's okay. Just. It's like... Um, it's like any other fighting game, like Marvel vs. Capcom or something like that, except you're using characters out of the Persona, uh, Persona 4 games. I mean, it's cool. Um, there's going to be Persona 4 Dancing All Night. Oh, my gosh. It's a dance game for the Vita with play with Persona 4. Uh, whatever. How is that even weird? Uh, for the Vita? Yeah, I don't know. But what? <laughs> don't have a clue. Uh, it's, it's just a... That kind of is not the same, but it's similar to kind of It's like, like a uh, rhythm game. Um, well, Dead or Alive Volleyball. It's like... Mm-hmm. The, that's like, why? Right. <laughs> one of those it's games. Dance. And... True. <laughs> out of all the games, the only one that I really care about, Persona 5, is actually going to come out on the PlayStation 3 in 2015. That's all they've said. They don't... They haven't said anything about it, but it is going to be a North American release. Um, that's going to be a hot game. So, finally, a Persona game on the PlayStation 3. Um... Yeah, I'll have to go as soon as they're taking pre orders for the collector's edition of that, I'll have to go pre order it. So I've gotta have that. Um Oh, I see was Dying Light pushed back to twenty fourteen? Is that what this note says? Really? The end of Yeah, well because like, like I read some stuff online that said that uh I checked a couple of release dates that it wasn't pushed back, uh-huh. but then I read like stuff on Amazon and a couple other sites that it was pushed back to the end of twenty fourteen. Huh. Well, that's... I don't know why. It's supposed to come out like the spring. Yeah. I was going to say, I thought that was supposed to be like a, a spring, early summer game. I don't know a whole bunch. That's a zombie kind of yeah. Yeah. survival zombie parkour game, right? game, sort of a survival horror, but a lot, a little bit different than your traditional like right. Dead Island stuff. Yeah. It'll be fun. That's kind of odd, though, that it was pushed back. It's very strange. Okay, I put this down into anything else. Um I'll, we'll wait for the Kickstarter because I want you to talk about it, Nathaniel, because you know more about right, it than I do. That's fine. Um, the Walking Dead Season 2, Episode 2 will be out tomorrow on PC and Uh-oh, PlayStation 3. Steam. Yep. Better load up Steam. Give me Walking Dead. Um, I was, that's cool. So I'll be playing it tomorrow because um, it only takes me two hours. So, so why? That's right. So um, I'm trying to, of course, I can't get the story to load. There we go. Um, I was trying to see scheduled for March 4th on the 360, uh, the ISO, iOS, and PlayStation Network in Europe. We'll get it on the 4th. Or, or no, wait. We'll get it. 
dates are still being nailed down, so they haven't okay, they haven't decided yet. It's March fourth for PC and PlayStation three, three sixty, uh, iOS and European PSN will get it at some point. They have not said when. Probably in the next week, I would say. Um, it's usually what happens when they can't nail down a release date. It's usually the next day. Um, so <laughs> it's going to be good. It's going to be yeah. Good. It's going to be real good. I hope it doesn't have any more of those uh, moments like the first one had. Oh my gosh! Like yes. Yeah, gut mm. punches. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good on the gut punches for at least one episode. <laughs> and so, so what's up with the Hive Jump Kickstarter, Nathaniel? They have canceled it since we went back uh, the interview last time. They canceled it. I don't know, a couple of days I, ago. I think it was it was Thursday ago, or Friday like because I went on it and tried yeah. to. You know, I got paid Friday and I was like, okay, I need to back these guys. And then I go to the page and I'm like, it's canceled. What the heck? Yeah, basically they just looked at it and it's like we're not going to make our funding. And the problem was kind of a visibility thing. Mm-hmm. So they're going to relaunch the Kickstarter, it says, April 21st. Oh, okay. And in between then, there's GDC. Right. So they've set, they're have they setting up some meetings at GDC with some press so that they can get some get their name out there a little bit. They're also, I think, setting up, it says here on their little update page, setting up meetings with like Nintendo, Microsoft, Sony to discuss opportunities and things for putting it on consoles. So that might help them be able to do that quicker than they would be able to on their own yeah. and stuff like that. That's cool. And they're also going to complete more of the games that they, you know, I probably take it to GDC to show people as well, but just have a little bit more features in their demo rather than just like, Hey, we're going to do this. They'll actually have something to show. So it's one of those things where they're kind of trying to use Kickstarter itself to get some exposure without having had anything beforehand and it just doesn't really work very well that way yeah so it's kind of one of those things where they looked at it and had some talk to some people who've done kickstarter that they know as well and just say okay it's probably better to stop it now and then relaunch it because you're way 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 short right of what you were asking for which really for what they're trying to do probably isn't that unreasonable it's just for a tiny studio like them difficult to get that high without anyone knowing about it beforehand in a limited time that a Kickstarter would run. Right. So I think it looks like they're going to try and get a little bit more of the game done in the next couple months and then also just try and get some more exposure on it out there so people know about it a little bit so they can then come back with Kickstarter again and say, hey, come fund us now. (laughs) Well, at least you can still, in fact, I just clicked it twice. You probably couldn't hear it, but it'll probably be on the recording. I actually clicked on the link in the, uh, uh, um, the Kickstarter thing there uh, for their uh, green light, Steam green light, green light. Mm-hmm. And they tweeted it out earlier last week, and I clicked on it, and it kept saying not found, not found. So I was like, well, what in the world? So I just, well, that's weird. I think that's more on you because I saw it on the green light. I may have. I don't know. That's it's hard to have, tell. But, but I finally, it, it's working through that, so I finally just – Apparently they've gotten right. over 6,000 votes already. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This, so – I have voted it because I was like, yeah. I'm, so, I'm actually trying to see here where it's at right now, and I don't see where the votes are at. Um, I don't know. It just says on their Kickstarter thing. I haven't looked. I don't know if you can tell. That's what I was going to say. It may not show it's it here. It's something like they have some analytics they can look at, or maybe they get a report from Steam saying, hey, you've gotten so far, you know, so many votes so far. Yeah, they must have because there's nothing here on the page that says it. But It's got like 246 comments on mm-hmm. it. So I think with that, get a little exposure for that, get a little exposure through the press, maybe it'll do a little bit better next time on Kickstarter. Well, I think they also say they're going to readjust a little bit what they're uh, setting as their funding goals as well. Mm-hmm. Well, so with knows. GDC coming up, it'll definitely be – that'll help. Um, get the word out, yeah. you know, a little better. GDC too. isn't really the biggest, you know, thing as far as gaming news coming out of, but it's good also for just behind the scenes talking to some other people about, you know, getting it on consoles or, you know, getting a little bit of meet uh, interviews with press or something. But it's not like a uh, PAX or anything right. like that usually, as far as you know, game announcements or anything like that coming out of GDC. But it's more than zero, I think. So yeah. It'll help them out, hopefully. That's true. And I saved this one for last because I figured we'd probably get into discussion a little bit about things. But um, BioWare tweeted out the other day that they had been discussing internally about putting out 
possible remastering m- remasters of the Mass Effect trilogy for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. So here already again in an early con an early console generation, do we have are we already having talks of HD remakes for uh, the yeah. new system? Um, I call it good. Well, I mean, I guess it's good. I don't think it's that big a deal. One early on, what else is out there? True. Two, they're just talking about maybe doing it. They haven't actually gotten it out yet. Right. They're just like, hey, we're considering it. So it's still going to take a while to put together. Yeah, I would think. And three, for me, uh, it's Mass Effect. Like, come on. Yeah. Now, other games, who knows? And, you know, like, start a tidal wave and then we'll be talking different several months later. Like, oh, too many reasons. I don't know, though. If, uh, if some games like Mass Effect, I don't think I would play through them again. I just don't think I would play through them well, again. Well, it's not necessarily that I would play through it again, but how to get out there yeah. where Mass Effect mm-hmm was a decent hit but not that many people played it overall compared to some other big franchises so it's more an opportunity of other people to play it and if they put it out now or fairly early you know get it out fairly soon where there's not as much competition on the next gen or oh i might try this i saw that i remember this from last generation i might play this because there's nothing else out that's true now and then that would work feed into a new game so more people would play it be more successful and blah 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 yeah well the the one thing that i thought was uh, that came out of it was phil spencer had tweeted earlier that micro or, or right after that that microsoft was interested in uh, bringing out a remake of Knights of the Old Republic Anniversary Edition since this year's the anniversary oh, of nice. it. Oh, yeah. Now, see. But it's been out, what, a year or two or something? No, no, no. Not it's the. Gonna be, it's going to be a problem, though. It's called uh, LucasArts doesn't exist anymore. Well, yeah, but Microsoft, you know, flipped the bill for the first one anyway. So they, you know, they backed it. LucasArts just made oh, okay. it. Yeah, not not the. I didn't hear you say the Knights part. So yeah, that's why I was not the Old Republic. Yeah, Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah, uh, it's easy to oh, get man. that confused. If they did that. That would be cool, but they would have to really update it. I don't yeah, know if they played it, but just gameplay mechanics wise, it definitely shows its age. Yeah, it does. And you know, so they not only would have graphics that they would have to update if they really wanted people to pay attention to it, but they have to overhaul kind of the gameplay systems a bit as well yeah i I don't know it's just sometimes it's you know i I think back to when we first saw the first hd remixes on the playstation 3 and xbox 360 and it was in a good what two or three years into the system something like that i don't know maybe it just it almost seems too soon to me but i I guess i know you hadn't seen this yet because when you put this in the show notes he hadn't put a video out but uh, adam sessler actually talked about hd remakes Mm -hmm. in uh, their video for uh revision three whatever right today i think it was a sessler something video it's like his weekly yeah i usually watch those after the show he thinks at least some of it he's talking about it could be a good thing because if gaming loses its history so quickly because as soon as you get to the next system you can't play stuff from previous well systems, that's true or you know a couple systems ago it's more of a console thing now with pc you also were into it just with operating systems sometimes but there's workarounds and people figure out ways to play it a lot of times mm. Sometimes it works, you know, like some games that ran in DOS back in the day, you have ways that you can kind of get that to work now, All right. depending on what it is, there's still compatibility issues. But with consoles, you don't really have much options. And it's also some of the younger people might not have ever played these games. They might have heard of them, but they've never had the opportunity to play it. And all they have is a console at home. So you put out an HD remake and suddenly, hey, they get to play something. Yeah, that's true. And I never thought of that. I usually watch Sessler after Sessler something after we record right before I go to bed. Yeah. That's usually last It's one of those things. It doesn't bug me. If they want to spend some money and put out an HD remake on something, it doesn't mean I have to go out and buy it again and play it if I've already played it. That's it's, true. You know, but it's cool that it's there. You know, it's not... It doesn't bug me, I guess. Yeah. I, I guess it... There are worse things that they could spend money on to shovel out on the console. I guess so, but it's to me it seems like you know, the, the effort they would put in doing an HD remix is you know, taken away from something that they could do new. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, sometimes, but not necessarily. It could just be something like, hey, we have this amount of time that we have to fill doing something before we can actually move on to something else or we have our second team or yeah, that could whatever. Be. Yeah, that's true. A lot of times that's how it goes. It goes as a filler or it goes to a second secondary team or they like 
put it off on somebody to do a port, basically. And, you know, we've seen with the previous HD remakes, sometimes they put a, a decent amount of effort into it, and sometimes they don't. That's true. You're right. Um, <laughs> sometimes they're not really spending much time or money or effort to put some of these out, so it's not really getting in the way of anything. <laughs> yeah, you're right. But then you look at that and you're like, eh, it's, it's not worth it because they didn't really do much and it still doesn't work very well. So it's kind of a catch-22. Yeah. You guys spent enough on it that it's worth doing and it's not just, you know, you know the menus and all that stuff actually works because there's a few of those I remember that came out that the menus and stuff were terrible. <laughs> they didn't do any updating at all and there's bugs and all that sort of stuff in it. But then, you know, you don't want to spend too much time and effort on it like you said. Right. So you got to find that balance, I guess. Yeah, I guess that's true. I don't know. We'll see. As long as too many of them don't come out at one time, I don't want to see, you know, it's not, you know, it's one thing when it's an anniversary of something, you know, the um, they just redid Fable, the first Fable for the Xbox 360. You know, that was mm-hmm. an anniversary thing. Halo 2 will be an anniversary this year. They're talking about, re- you know, redoing it. So I'm okay with that, but... As long as they just don't do a ton of them at one time. I don't want every other month some new HD remake coming out. You know, I'm like, I've played that before. or you know, But for those people that haven't played it, good for them. You know, at least give them something. You know what I want? What's that? I want the quote-unquote HD remake of The Last Guardian. To come yeah, that would be all right. <laughs> I would like the... I mean, look how old that thing was like, how long ago that was announced, mm-hmm. and how long that development has just gone on and on and on and on. Just, sure. I want been... that game already made. I want my HD remixes of Shenmue 1 and 2, because I had read somewhere, and I can't find the stupid article now, but I had read somewhere that Sega had already done HD remixes of yeah. Shenmue 1 and was just setting on them. It and they have it in house, and I'm like, what are they waiting on? I don't know, but who knows? Yeah. See, you know, you can say like, oh, I'm not sure about HD remakes, but there's you, just about every, anybody who's played games for any length of time has at least one or two games. Are like, oh Man, yeah, I'd like to see an HD remake of that. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's like um, the other night, um, somebody on Twitter. There's a guy I follow on Twitter. He's over in the UK. He does, he collects retro video games, and he put up a picture of flashback. One was the Genesis box art, one was the 3DO box art, and the other one was the uh, PC box art. And he was like, which one of these do you guys remember? And I remember the middle one because it was um, the Genesis box art. And um, so then I laid in bed all night, Saturday night, going, man, I love that game. They made a <laughs> they made a remake of it on the PlayStation. I need to buy that. <laughs> and what did I do? I got up Sunday morning and I bought the remake. <laughs> So, like, so yeah, there is. I guess there is that thing with HD remakes, you know, especially of old old games. That you're just like, you know what, that demo wasn't too bad. Maybe I'll buy it. <laughs> a lot of times, it's just trying to make on nostalgia, and you're just like, oh, I'll yeah. It. And that's and that's kind of what this was. It was like, you know, just there's nothing wrong with that. So it makes you feel any better. I uh, I felt the same way about Resident Evil Three. I was like, oh, I have great fond memories of playing that. I should play it. I'm gonna get it. I got it, played it for like an hour, and I go, huh, exactly like I remember it. Oh, speaking of um, of retro games, Saturday we didn't want to stay in the house, so we uh, we all got in a, we got in the car and we went to Charlotte and went to IKEA and things like that. And uh, that doesn't have retro. Games. No, no, but my my goal down there was to furniture. Tetris. Yeah, furniture, tetris, which is kind of like that in IKEA. But anyway, <laughs> as many people was in that store, it was like Tetris because we were all crammed in there. Like, I mean, it was packed, but. Uh, when we left, there was a. I saw online that there was a mom and pop's video game store. I was like, you know what? Where is this at? Come to find out, it's like three blocks from IKEA. We'd passed it like seventeen hundred times, and I never even knew it was there. So we stopped and went in and looked around. I mean, it was okay. They had the stuff on the shelf. They had was kind of old garbage wear Not stuff. Expensive. It was inexpensive. I think the most expensive game I saw was twenty bucks, and that was like a. Uh, PlayStation 3 game, you know, uh, something kind of newer. Um, now they had some, they had the good stuff behind the counter, um, you know, box copies of uh, Final Fantasy on the Super NES and, um, uh, you know, real nice retro systems and uh, things like that. But, you know, it's like, okay, I know where to go to finally, because there's just not a lot of mom and pop shops around this area. Um, I don't know about Raleigh. Um, carry area nathaniel i'm never i'm never over that i haven't looked into it there might be one or two but i don't know i doubt it speaking of yeah 
Speaking there's of lots of game stops. Yeah, there are. <laughs> there's some good mm. stuff though. So it's, you know, mom and pop stores are hard because like you want to support them. Right. But then you go there and it's like, oh, blah blah blah, the Super Nintendo game, fifty bucks, and I go, hmm. well, Amazon has it for forty. I could probably get a card only copy on eBay. You know, I think I'm going that. Well, way. that was the thing there. They did the stuff that they had on the shelf was all good stuff. It was great price stuff. The trouble was, is all of it they had on the shelf. I either had it. Or I didn't, you know, it was stuff that I didn't want. Yeah, that's that's my problem with the mom and pop store here. I like going there. I like supporting them. You know, they have like anime and card games and stuff yeah. like that, and they have a pretty good selection of games. It's just freaking expensive. Like, I mean, Super Mario RPG was. I'm pretty sure the box copy they had was like. It was expensive. It was probably one and a half times what you get. Jeez. Online. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, I understand. It's tough to find. I know you got to make money, but at the same time, but. They do take box PC games, so sometimes at garage sales, I'll find box PC games, and if I call ahead, you know, oh yeah, come on, bring them in, they'll give me like, you know, five, ten bucks per oh, game. That's pretty good. I'll use the store credit and buy other stuff. The best Ooh. boxed PC game I ever found, I found on eBay, is X-Wing versus TIE Fighter. It's still sealed. It's the old floppy disk version. It was a nice. dollar. Oh, good <laughs> And it's probably worth something. Yeah, I'm sure it is. I just bought it and put it up I in the had, collection. <laughs> when, Guzex, when Guzex was uh, going, well, things were slowing down at Guzex and they had the exchange, yeah. I picked up Strife, which is an FPS game, in box, and System Shock 2 for, you know, not, not a whole lot of Guzex right. points. Both those were, yeah, you know, I sold them. Yeah. But uh, there's another mom and pop store in a town that's a couple hours away that I used to go through a lot for work at my previous mm-hmm. job. And they used to have a shop down here, but the guy moved everything over there. But his, yeah, I'd rather shop at my mom and pop store before I shop there. It's called like One Up Games, and his prices are like they're pretty expensive. I mean, people like it because they're like, oh, there's no other place I can buy you know, right. games. I can't buy them at like GameStop and stuff like that. So, <clears throat> yeah, but you know, yeah, some people think they got like the crown jewel of something, and I mean, yeah, I know some of those games are hard to find, but come on, I mean. Jeez. Well, it's like, that's the problem with mom and pop stores that they run into is they're competing not only with GameStops, but the internet. Right. You have so that's many a- avenues to find things nowadays with, you know, just selling it on Amazon or looking on eBay or, you know, even Craigslist sometimes if you live in a good area for it. There's tons of ways for people to get rid of old games and other things like that that if you're trying to run a store, it's difficult. That's true. Well, we decided we're going to hit the heart, the yard sales hard this year. I want a Sega Master System again, so I miss my Master System. So You should get me a list of what you want, and when I go to that huge garage sale in the Seattle area that has like 300, yeah. usually 150 to 200 houses that have stuff, or I got that Super Nintendo last year. With six games for three bucks? Dang. Let me know what you there's, want. And I'll there's look. only two systems, retro systems, that I have that I don't have that I want. And one's a Sega CD system, and the other is a Master System. And I have a Master System power base converter. The only reason I want a Master System is I just want it to have. I don't want it to play. I don't want to play it all. I just want to have it. Because I always that's that was the first video game system that I personally had, well, not the very first one. I have an Odyssey 2. That was the first one I had. But um, Hey, last year was a good score. Complete copy, sealed, still in the plastic, the game was, and all the manuals. Mm. Legend of Zelda. Yeah, see? The original. Yeah. And the guy was like, I was like, well, how much do you want for it? I knew what it was worth. And he's like, well, how about $10? <laughs> okay. So. Um, here's here's 15 <laughs> <But> yeah, Thanks. <laughs> He had a bunch of he had a bunch of other stuff, and I picked through, and I was like, "Common stuff, common stuff." And I, and I use, the, you know, most of that stuff I don't pick up for myself. I pick up to right, because, you know, use it to support my other game right. outlets. And I, the Super Nintendo I hung on to though, because I picked up a couple games over the summer, and I played a few things. I got rid of it eventually because you know I got the Retro on Five. Yeah, and I got mine coming too, which. Uh... But you know, nothing beats. I mean, yeah, emulation is good with that thing, but I mean, yeah, if you got the original. And, yeah, there's just something about having the original and just, you know, I just... I think I think last year that garage sale, somebody, or two years ago, somebody was giving away a uh, busted 360. Oh, it hadn't been opened. It just didn't, you know, it was like Red Ring of right. Death. And I found out later that I could have, it was free, and I could have sold it on eBay for like 50 to 75. Oh, yeah. Probably. I mean, people, so you know, I sold two. I sold my two broken Xboxes on uh, CAG, on uh, Craigslist for 
fifty or sixty bucks, you know, just to get rid of them. Like, people want them for parts, so yeah, people want to do what they want to do. Yeah, I, I like garage sailing. I mean, I just uh, that's going to be fun this summer. I can't wait to talk about the stuff I find and things like that. And, you know, you get to that garage sale and see that guy buying all those games, and he's just buying like the common stuff, and then you just see that one rare title. And that's what <laughs> yeah, we're we're going to make a better effort this year to get out to the yard sales. We just didn't last year, so. You know what you need to do just for your own amusement mm. is get the uh, Legend of Zelda like treasure noise, <laughs> and anytime you find something, just play have it, it on your phone. Yeah, you, know, you can just... when you and pick it up over your head. <laughs> there was a guy. It must have been maybe two years ago. He had a, he had a, he had the uh, one of the scanner apps on his phone, and he's looking at all these PlayStation One games, and he's scanning them, and he has a pile he's looked through, and he put like. And he has a pile off the side that he's not interested. I'm looking through the pile that he's not interested. I'm like, ooh, Resident Evil 1, I'll take that. Ooh, Silent Hill, I'll take that. Mm. And he's like, you know, I'm like, why are you, I don't usually, I have a pretty good sense of what things things are worth, so I'm not going to take the time to scan stuff. I'm not looking for Right. Those. That's just. I'm not looking for DVDs. That's too much. And that's what he was passing up. I see, it just doesn't make sense, but uh, that's, a, that's mm. another. Maybe maybe the app only scans for Amazon prices. It could. And if, like, uh, someone's pricing is wonky. Who knows? All right. Anything else? Anything else we missed? Missed? Oh, Man, I'm having a hard time talking tonight. Are, are any of you guys getting picking up anything in March? Um, like I say, I'm going to get Metal Gear. I might get Infamous. South Park? Nah. South Park? No, I'm probably not going to get South Park. South Park? Nah, probably not. I have it pre-ordered, but I think I'll probably cancel. So, I mean, I kind of want to get Second Son, but I'll probably wait till price comes down. Metal Gear Solid 4... Again, I'll wait for a price to yeah. come down if I decide to get it. Black Friday. And then Dark Souls 2 I'm kind of interested in, but like I said, I would probably get crushed. Get yeah, angry. Dark Souls, I'll just wait. If I don't order the collector's edition of Dark Souls, I'm not in a hurry to get the regular edition. So Yeah, I did I did do a little shopping this weekend. You guys have big lots in your Yeah, area? we do. Yep. Yeah, they, did you see that thread on K? I did. There was a, it was 75% off and 20% off on Sunday. And I went to, they have two locations around me, and I went to one of them. I didn't find any. I found one game. But the second one had a stack of stuff. I was like, I'll take one of we, each. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I can return it for some Yeah, stores. we got a couple of them, you, but I never, uh, on, I never went some to people, them. Some people on CAG walked away with really good stuff, like good 360 and good PS3 games, not just, you know, the leftovers, yeah. no Michael, Michael Phelps swimming. <laughs> <laughs> usually <laughs> around here, that's all you find is the leftovers, so I usually so, don't even go anymore. Something, something for the Wii. And I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah, the only thing I did pick up this week and weekend, you know, what did we did all this shopping, went everywhere, we went to BJ's and got our stuff, and they were having a big sale on games and yeah. somebody had, oh, well, somebody, I should have hey, it doesn't matter, like doesn't to, matter to because I went and somebody had already been to the store and cleared it out, and I know who it was because he made a post on CAG about it. I was like, you <laughs> son of a gun, because because we didn't even know. We go when we go to Charlotte to go to BJ's. We only know the one that's in Concord Mills. We didn't realize there was another one on the south side of town. So we were like, "It's too busy at Concord Mills. Let's go to the south side of town." So we went to the south side of town. I was like, "Hey," I told my wife. I said, "Nobody has mentioned this one on CAG. So I bet you twenty bucks there's some really good ten dollar games in here." And I go in and they have the big thing sitting there, and the only thing they had left was like Bioshock Infinite. I was like, "Are you serious?" I get home. I yeah, I get home. I said down i'm looking on cag to see uh the posts on the bj thing and some guy was like yeah i went to the i went to the one over in pineville and it was but and i got blah 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 and six copies of this and five copies of that and i was like i'm gonna come through the computer and choke you because you were there two hours before i got there and got everything <laughs> so here's the question have you i've never there's not a lot of other guys around here that use keg there's my one buddy that was big in a keg and big into goose mm. X and we hang out some and he uh, he he does stuff, like he went to one of the local blockbusters before they closed and cleared out a bunch of stuff and left me some stuff. So that was pretty yeah. cool. But I don't ever run into people. You don't see that guy with the phone at the sign that says. I K, run into him all the time. Like They're everywhere down here. I mean, North Carolina has got to have one of the biggest CAG groups of people down here because I see them all the time. I'll be, you know, if something gets cheap at Best Buy or something like that and I'll be like okay I'll be there in the morning I get there in the morning and there's like four other guys standing there with phones going nope that's not it nope that's not it and we just look at each other and go CAG yep and I just turn around and leave oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to like jump and tackle him <laughs> 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 uh, 
know you go back into your car and get your... Uh, yeah, really. Just wait for him to come out. <laughs> But no, there's there's a lot of CAG people around here, and they they cleared out they clear out things quick around here because it was funny. Yeah. We were at BJ's three weeks ago. This was before the announcement came on CAG of the nine dollar drops, and the one BJ's in Burlington had a lot of them, but it was all stuff that I already had, and they even had a two uh, DS was ninety nine dollars brand new. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why I waited to tell him that when we were on the show. Then wait and tell him. <laughs> it hurts him. It hurts him. My I brain. get joy from your pain. <laughs> oh man, okay. been a while since you used yeah, that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's. I mean, that was all, that's almost as good as the deal they had. At Target yeah, Olympics you're right. The new ones were like 130, included that one that came with Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why. They, that's the original reason I took back my 3DS XL. I was like, ooh, I'd rather have this. But it's yeah, so, I really. I, I want to. 3ds XL. I just want a bigger one. I mean, I like my, I like the one I've got. It's a first year or first release one, but I just like a bigger screen. So, do you have the ambassador then? Um, no, I got it. It's it's the f- not the very first batch. It was that first batch, that second batch, I guess you'd say. After they were really hard to find, you know, you couldn't find them anywhere, and then all of a sudden they were everywhere they were, it was like two or three months after launch something like that i was just like two days out of the ambassador thing just missed it so but. yeah i'm fine with the smaller i use ds lights so i should have no problem using a 3d that or a 3ds or a 2ds screen mm-hmm. size i just looked like a bear um i almost bought a, i bought a, one other thing this week i bought the 2ds case but at uh, gamestop i was looking at killer is dead and i was like oh 30 bucks new is the LE version or used was 25 but I was like I bet I can do better than that did you I thought you picked I did up. I bought it on uh, at when Amazon had it for like $30 or something like that I don't mm, Amazon has it for 20 right now oh really that's cool like that they used uh, the uh, a very good used copy on the warehouse I was like hmm I wonder if this is the LE because the LE comes with the yeah the art book and the, the soundtrack, soundtrack and the con- and- it's uh, pretty disturbing oh yeah it is the damn yeah it is there's lots of inappropriate. Yeah, lots right? of inappropriateness, a lot of strange, weird things. Just weird. Um, but not Yay. a bad not in a bad way. I mean, I like it. I like it a lot, so Yeah, it might be one of those games I buy for the summer. Yeah. Right now, I mean, we yeah, it'd be cool. We should talk about our backlogs one of those oh. shows and just well, I know you have a huge <laughs> backlog. Daniel and I, I think Daniel and I are a little bit uh, we, have uh, a backlog and then yeah. John, pick a couple things from yours. Well, uh, you can me, only pick yeah, 10 let me, And if you're going to play them in the next year. You better so. just ask what year. How What what generation should I go for? Should I go for 360? Mm-hmm. Should I go for PlayStation 1? <laughs> Do you own any 60-hour role-playing game on PlayStation I own a ton of 60-hour role-playing games. Yeah, I... I need to my you know I had my little program on my iPad where I was cataloging everything. Something happened and it got all erased, and I've got to start over again. So yeah, I need to sit down and do that because you would probably be shocked and appalled by some of the role playing games that I have. If you would take the total hours that it would take to complete them all, I would never complete them probably in two lifetimes. So, but I still have them, <laughs> and I won't let go of them. You just need to hire some people to play them. Hey, that would be the thing to do. Yeah, I never thought of that. Did I ever tell you that one story where I went to a garage sale? It was real quick. And there was a guy, he was moving to like, I think he was moving to like Virginia or something. And he was getting rid of all of his game on a finances trip. He got a new job. And he had stacks of stuff. He was cutting deals. He he gave me like Silent Hill 1, Resident Evil 2 and 3, and a few other games for like 40 bucks and they're all black label complete it was a pretty good deal but he's like yeah and he had stacks of super nintendo games mostly common stuff yeah. he's like oh yeah i already sold out the rare stuff this morning I was like, yeah. Yeah. that's and that's what we're talking about with work changing we might actually move we're i talked to the uh, the guys at the corporate and they're like well we might be able to transfer you to another just pick a couple states that you might like to go to and let us know <laughs> So it's like, okay, well, we pick Virginia, Tennessee. I'm like, God, I don't want to move. Oh, my gosh. I just remember moving from this house, from the apartment to this house, and it was less than five miles, and I was ready to choke somebody. So I can't imagine moving 500 miles and having to pack all this stuff up. I told my wife we'd have to rent a, a semi truck. We'd have to. Maybe the work would pay for it if I do that. That'd be nice. Just box it up and have somebody pack it, put it in the truck, and unload it for me. That'd be all right. I could do that. 
Oh, well. Well, let's get out of here. Nobody wants to hear my problems. So. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to hear my problems. Go ahead, Eric, and uh, tell everybody how to get a hold of us. Okay, you can email us. Uh, we're at, or we're the podcast, we're, we're podcast at the dash gamers, the uh, dash lounge dot com. You can follow us on Twitter at GL underscore podcast. I'm at cube zero zero. It's cube zero zero with a K. John is at JC Meadows 94 and Nathaniel is at polygon underscore wizard. Um, you can check out the site at the gamers dot com. That's dashes between the gamers and lounge. <laughs> And we have review, <laughs> we have reviews, and editorials, and whatnot, um, deals, articles, pre-order breakdowns for months and games, and you can listen to the podcast yep. too. Should have some good articles up this week. Um, looks like we may actually have enough to fill out the whole week, so we may have something new every day. So hopefully, um, and we the show might actually be on Stitcher. I have not re- received an email from them yet, but I don't have my phone here, so I can't search for Stitcher. But I resubmitted it last week again, so. Hopefully we'll hear something about that this week, but uh, we'll see. All right. Well, thanks, guys, for listening. We appreciate it. Um, be, like like Eric said, be sure to check out the site. Stop by. We'll have some new articles up this leave week. Yeah, leave us some comments. Had some really good comments this week on uh, your Titanfall uh, article. Woo-hoo. So um, be sure to check that out. Uh, yeah, subscribe to us on iTunes. Leave us some feedback, some reviews, rate us, all that good stuff. I'm in the works right now of maybe getting some prizes for some things. So, you know, me. Like yep, so we may have some prizes for emails. You give us feedback, and stuff. you get prizes. That's right. And emails. Send us emails, you get prizes. Everything like that. So, I got to be the end of the week um, before I know for sure. But um, we'll see what we could do. So, but, uh, yep. So, thanks for listening. Be sure to check back with us next week, same time. And we will catch you guys later. See ya.